All right, tonight we have a A1990. A this has actually been in here for repair before and we resolved the primary issue of it, which is it just simply wasn't working. But due to time constraints, it uh, went out straight away before I realized there was a faulty port. The other problem was that the faulty port was actually being worked on before. And so when I saw the prior repair there, I didn't bother to touch it because as a general rule, you try not to, um, if something's working, you try, you try not to meddle with other person, other technicians work unless you're willing to completely you know, take responsibility for what happens when you up and change it. So, I mean, I knew it was there, but the damage that was causing the machine not to open, uh, not to operate was elsewhere. So I just thought, right, well, there's no point disturbing what already seems to work. And, uh, because typically, if there's a fault with one of the CD3215s, none of them will work. But it seems in this case, the fault was not quite bad. So this is the work from the previous technician. And so essentially, yeah, that port doesn't work. And unfortunately, like I said, I didn't do my exit tests fully. And as a consequence, it got to the person that said, hey, this board actually doesn't work. Anyway, so it's back here now for a finishing up of the job. It also needs another battery. Um, but frustratingly, the supply of these batteries has all of a sudden dried up. So I can't even get access to them. Uh, let's see, I seem to have a screw missing there. I'll have to check in my previous video to see if that screw was in fact missing all, all along. I suspect it was. That is one nice thing about having everything on video archive, as you can always go back, double check your work, um, prove your innocence as it were, or sometimes prove your guilt, in which case then you just delete the video. <laughs> I, d I don't recommend that. Anyway, I apologise. It has been quite a while since I've done any videos and it probably will be a little while before I get back to making a lot of videos. It's just there are too many other pressures at the moment that I have to prioritise things well above the desire to do YouTube videos. I mean, don't get me wrong. YouTube videos are still good, but other things are certainly more important at this point. Yeah, it's a it's a little hard to justify the things for a hundred dollar a month YouTube advertising income. Of course there are many other advantages to the YouTube exposure, you know, the main one being that people actually get to see the work that is being done. So in a form of uh, in a way, it's advertising, which is important. Anyway, I figure the fact that there's over a thousand other videos out there already with me, that I could take a little bit of a break. I'm taking this main board straight out because, like I said, I'm basically going to just replace that 3215 most likely. Either it's partially faulty or it isn't soldered on properly. There is a small chance of something else is wrong but we'll have a look like I, said, I didn't dig in too deeply because when I like I said before when I checked it everything booted up and ran after I did my fix so you don't really tend to look twice with those sort of things at least this is a 1990 and not a 2141 it was a 2141 the extraction process or rather the reinstallation process is a bit more of a pain That's still that aside they're not that bad really compared to the more modern machines okay boards out I am not even sure where my rework was. I think it was up here somewhere. 
Normally I mark it, but I didn't this time. Seems like I let a lot of things slip. Alright, let's have a look at this work here and verify a few things before we proceed. You don't want to go cutting off a toe that wasn't actually needing to be cut off. Okay, so this is the 3215 that was put on by somebody else. It, um, it's hard to say. I'll put the USB-C meter on it and see what comes up. That one transitions to 20. Yeah, we have got absolutely nothing at all on that port. So the fact that we're getting absolutely nothing makes me think that there's something wrong with the CC lines. They're either shorted or yeah, disconnected. But when you're getting absolutely no voltage coming through, that basically means there's no negotiation at all going on. So we have a look at the CC lines. Just make sure we don't have a crack down here. Okay, look at the board view and schematic. Okay, so these are our lines here, CC1, CC2. So if we look up here, we want like 0 0.59 and 0.97. And we got a dead set short to there. That's interesting. One five there. Definitely a short there. Short there. One four there. Hmm. Have a look at on the caps. That's there. That's interesting. That makes no sense. No sense at all. Second cap to the top here. So you're sure. What? Not sure why the diode mode is throwing me. Oh, oh no, that's saying it's. Yep. And that one's also shorted. Alright, so both those CC lines are shorted. Which is a little weird. I'm just going to take this off and have a look. I can understand one being shorted, but both of them's a little weird. I have a... If I had to take a guess, I feel like this here is actually sitting lower on this edge here than it is up here. Uh, I can see some, yeah, you can see some short, uh, shorted balls in there. See those two blobs? You can see like two blobs single ball, two blobs, single ball, and yeah. Alright, so basically the person who installed this, it didn't work out for him. I'm actually impressed that the machine even worked. So for all those people who say that MacBooks 
the apple's no good, that they die at a moment's notice, well, you know, there's also these situations. So we'll get this off, put a new one on, and hopefully that will be the end of the story. Oh, better not melt that connector up there. Give us another shield. I've become a bit of a shield person lately. Like always putting shields down. Probably a sign of lack of confidence, I suppose. I don't know what they did to merge those balls. They might have tapped the chip or something like that. I don't know. I mean, it's all very easy to make mistakes. I mean, goodness knows I make plenty myself. I have a feeling the person might have just simply been exasperated at this point I'm trying to fix the board and gave up. And you know, I've got plenty of boards where I have certainly given up early. You know, sometimes you just, it's better to give up while you're sort of ahead haven't completely destroyed the machine let someone else handle it sometimes it's just not your day you know sometimes while well, you might be able to under other circumstances cope with it sometimes you just can't and I think it's more important to think about the customer's machine hand it off to someone who can deal with it and then yeah, at least, sure, you didn't get the job, you didn't get the money, but at least hopefully then the person will be able to get it to someone else and then they will get it repaired. And so the customer won't necessarily hold you with too much of an acrimonious type of attribute. And I'm just trying to get rid of the excess flux here. It's not the easiest thing. Give it a couple more, a couple more wipe overs. Try and reduce the flux load. I mean, yes, I will be putting more flux down, but at least it'll be fresh flux and I can control how much I put down usually. It's going to be a bit tricky trying to get the flux out behind that standoff pogo pin. Uh, this, this might have to be what we accept. Get ourselves a thresh 32.15. And by fresh, it means someone else has reballed at some other prior time. Okay, our pin one's down here. You can see that missing pad there. It's not really missing, it's just an indicator for us in this case. So that's where pin one is. That's good. I'm going to preheat the board a little bit. I like to preheat these boards before I put the chips down. It just makes it a little easier for the chip to reflow into place without everything else getting cooked. It also means when I put the flux down it tends to flow better so you typically don't put as much excess down. That should be enough. Uh, I'm trying to <laughs> very tempting to try and tap that 
get a better starting alignment. But realistically, starting alignment, as long as you're not too far out, having it off is advantageous. Because it means when it does slide into place, you really do know. see if we've got merged connections or not. They're looking all good to me. Oh, it's probably cool enough now. see if we have a success or a loss okay I can't remember which port it was but anyway that one's going proper I'm pretty sure that was the port yep we've got proper jump there give it a few seconds to discharge there's a strange phenomenon where sometimes you can if you have a dead port you can plug this into the other port get it up to 20 volts and then you plug it into the dead port and it also jumps up but it's not a proper um, 20 volt situation it's sort of like some zombie mode anyway uh, that's why we wait a few seconds all right so straight away we've got five volts which means we've definitely fixed that port up and 20 volts there so let's put it all back together and see if we genuinely have a win here
Okay, so we're charging there. And we're charging on that port as well. So all is good. Very nice to see. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. Have a good one.